Righteousness is the standard in which God calls everyone to. Unfortunately, we are unable to attain it on our own. Praise God, Jesus offers us His righteousness for all who will believe. The question now is, how do we live out this lifestyle and how can we ensure we continue in it? It's through a simple process called sanctification. That is where we become in practice what we already are in position. The breastplate of righteousness allows what Jesus has given us to affect our lives on a daily basis. Pastor Terry continues in our current sermon series, Powerful Armor of God. Today's message is entitled, The Breastplate of Righteousness. Let's now join Terry in the sanctuary. We are in a a series that's called The Powerful Armor of God. And in this series, first we learned that, number one, we need the armor of God. Number one, we are in a a spiritual warfare. And also we learned that uh, the very first piece of armor the Bible talks about is the belt of truth. But before I get into that, I want to read you the scripture. And it's found in Ephesians 6, and it's 10 through 14. It says this, finally, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you what? Can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You got an enemy. This is spiritual warfare we're talking about. For our struggle, it's not against flesh and blood. It's not against mom and dad. It's not against my wife. It's not against the brothers. It's not against people I work with. But it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, or the spirit world. Verse 13, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when you, so that when the day of evil comes, that you may be able to stand your ground. Church, the day of evil is when you're just attacked. And by the way, the day of evil is just not one time, you're going to be attacked again and again and again and again in your lifetime. That's just true. That's the type of enemy we have. So, when the, so that you will be able to stand and the day of evil, when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and with the breastplate of righteousness. So the first thing we talked about last week was the belt of truth. And what is truth? Church, the truth is whatever God says and whatever his thinking on the matter is. The world is full of things today that's it's fake news, fake stuff. And it's kind of hard to distinguish what is true. And the Bible says there is truth in it. The truth, Jesus is the way, say it with me, the way, the truth, and the life. That's our Jesus. He is the truth. So anything that God has to say on a matter, the way you think, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you should even feel, anything that God says that is about our lives, that he's called us and he's empowered us and he's done for us, it is truth. And we put our life on it. Truth matters matters a lot. You don't want to be living a lie because then you will be destroyed. The Bible says that the truth will set you free. So whatever it is that's in your life today, the only way to be set free from it is number one, is to to walk and to stand in the truth of God's word. The word of God, it tells us what God thinks about a subject or matter. And the word of God tells us what he has spoken about a matter. Amen. So when we read the Word of God, we're taking that truth in. I gave you a CD, and I hope that you guys listen to it. If not, shame on you, listen to it this week, okay? I've had some people come to me and say, wow, that was powerful. Those scriptures just kept coming and pouring. These are the promises of God for me, what God wants for me, what God has done for me. They're powerful. Church, those are truth. And you know what? And they will go contrary to the way the world says that you should do things. It will go contrary to the way uh, the the world says that you should act or behave or even think about yourself or think about the world. It goes contrary. Why? Because the God of this world is the devil and he is a liar. Amen? Let me say it again. He is a liar. And everything that he speaks is a lie. And that is his attack on every one of us. He attacks our minds with the lies about Jesus, lies about the word of God. In Sunday school class and apologetics class, we're talking about different religions and which ones are cults. And there's two ways you can tell what a cult is. Number one, what do they do with the word of God? They will attack the word of God. Why? Because the word of God is truth. They want to lie. They want to deceive. They want to say, add something to it because the Bible's not complete. Add something to it. Or the Bible is wrong in this area. Or the uh, an angel gave me something different to add to uh, replace certain things. That is a lie. It will always attack the word of God. It will attack truth. And it attacks the very person of Jesus Christ. And who is Jesus Christ? The way, the truth, and the life. So the enemy today, his biggest tactic in our lives 
is attacking the truth, and he's a liar. So that's why we have to have the belt of truth. We don't go to others and say, what do you think about this? We don't go to Hollywood. Hollywood, tell me, what should I think about this? We don't go to social media. World, tell me, what should I think about this? No, we go to God. We go to the source, and he makes himself available. Amen? That's powerful. That's awesome. He has given us, it's his belt. Amen? And by the way, this is a belt that you don't take off. This isn't a belt that you, every morning you go, all right, I got to put my belt of truth on. This is something that you stay in every single day of your life. And the next two pieces of armor, you will find out too that is something that we should always have on us. Never take it off. Never have a recess from it. Amen? Never have a vacation. Never do that. And then we'll find out the last three pieces of armor, those we pick up in times of need. But truth is important. And today, the thing we also want to learn is this, is righteousness. Righteousness. The second piece is the breastplate of righteousness, the thing that covers the heart, that covers the chest. What is righteousness? Listen to this. Righteousness is the standard that God requires for people to be accepted by him. Wow. Wow. That's a high standard. God has standards for your life. If you want to be accepted by him, he has certain standards that you have to live by. That's high. God's standards are high. We don't meet those standards, do we? Has anyone met those standards? If your hand goes up, you're a liar, and then you just messed up the standard. Okay, good. We don't have those standards in our lives. What is the opposite of righteousness? Wrongness. (laughs) The belt of the breastplate of wrongness. I don't know. Maybe the girdle of wrongness. I have no idea. But either way, the the opposite of righteousness of God's standards is wrongness. And by the way, wrongness is where the devil dwells all the time. That's where he lives. That's where he operates because that's his character. He does everything opposite of the word of God. Opposite of uh, truth is wrongness. So those who operate in wrongness, listen to me, Christian or not, those who operate in wrongness, you're inviting demons into your life. Not into your heart, per se, but into your life to mess with you, into your mind, to mess with your imaginations, to mess with the truth that you think, well, I thought this was true. I think the Word of God says this. I think, I think, I think. And all of a sudden, you're confused, and that's where the enemy attacks. It's from the mind. He builds strong towers of lies and arguments against God. So we need that righteousness in our lives. And if we act in wrongness, if we act like the rest of the world, we are inviting demonic influence into our home, into our own minds, into our own lives, and into our own family. Isn't that something? Maybe you've never heard that before, but that's true. Hallelujah. Because demons function in wrongness. There's a man by the name of Jim Kennedy. He did this anonymous survey, and he sent it out there, and this was the question. Why don't Christians tell others about their faith? Why don't Christians witness to other people? And so he sent this out, and it was anonymous, and he thought he would get these three answers would be the top three answers. He thought, number one, I don't witness because I'm afraid. I I thought so, too. I thought that would be the number one also. He thought the second one would be, I don't feel like I'm equipped, or I've never really been taught how to witness or share my faith. And the third thing he says uh, he thought it would come about with this survey was that you don't, I don't personally know people who are unsaved. In other words, I only run around with those in my Christian circle anymore. So I really don't know someone that I can go up and speak to and start telling them about Jesus Christ in a personal way. And when the survey came back, he was amazed that these three didn't even make the top five. The number one reason and the, an overwhelming reason why people don't share their faith is this. I don't witness because of the life that I live. They were honest about it. They knew that they were not operating in righteousness. They were operating in wrongness. They was living like the world, acting like the world. When I say the world, I'm not just talking about people. I'm talking about the world out there. Who's who's in charge of the world today that clouds people's minds? Satan, evil forces, spiritual darkness, amen? Demons that are out there. People act like the world. They act selfish. Why do they act selfish? Because of the influence of the world around them, the influence of the demonic power around them. Why do they act so hateful? Why do they hate? Because of the demonic forces around them. That's part of their lives. And they act like that world. And that's what they do. So that's the reason why people don't share their faith. Maybe that's you. I want to let you know today that you can, and by the end of this service, that you will want to, okay? Can I prophesy that over you? You will want to. Hallelujah. This is the center of why we need the breastplate of righteousness. Because so many Christians operate in wrongness. Uh, I have some great news. When we become Christians, immediately 
we are giving the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Remember what I said, what righteousness is? It's the standard that God says, in order to come to me, in order to, for me to be part of your life, you have to have these standards of righteousness. And church, we don't have that. But here's the good news. The moment we become Christian, God gives us his righteousness. Jesus gives us his righteousness. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says this, It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. I like the way the New Living Translation puts it. It says this, God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made Jesus to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. That's righteousness. We're made right with God. How? To put in our faith in Jesus Christ. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Amen? So there's two major things that happened when Jesus went to the cross. Two major things. And by the way, these things are the greatest transactions that were ever made in the history of the world. Number one, Jesus took all of our sins upon himself. The Bible says that God made him sin for us. All of our sins, the sins that you've done in the past, you've done today, and then you're going to do in the future, all of them were placed, of every person in the whole world was placed upon Jesus Christ on that cross, and he died and suffered for those things. That's, that's, that's wonderful news because, number one, we won't be judged for those anymore. But you know what? To just stop there is not the whole gospel. Listen to this. You want to make sure you add the second part. Number one, Jesus died and all the sins of the world was placed upon him. Number two, Jesus gave us his righteousness. He never sinned. He never broke God's commandments. He never broke God's law. He's perfect in every way. And he gave us his righteousness. He took our sin and he gave us his righteousness so that we could be right with God. That is wonderful news. That should excite you. That should, t- that should say, you know what? I could share that. I can share what Jesus did. So when people talk about, let me tell you about Jesus. He died for your sins. Don't leave it there. Say also, you know what? He also made you right with Jesus, made you right with God if you put your faith and hope into him. Amen? Hallelujah. That's good news. What a tremendous gift. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this, and this is the Amplified Version. He made Christ who knew no sin to uh, judicially be sin on our behalf. So that in him, we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we will be made acceptable to him and placed in the right relationship with him by his gracious, gracious, loving kindness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something we can never do. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said in Philippians 3, 9, that I may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, from doing right, but... That is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Hallelujah. By the way, this this righteousness, it's called positional righteousness. Because of Jesus Christ, you you have been placed in position of being right with God. That is good stuff. So in other words, when God sees you, all he sees is Jesus' righteousness when he looks at you. He doesn't see your sin. He doesn't see your failures. He doesn't see your shortcomings. He doesn't see the things he sees. When you accept Jesus into your life and what he's done for you, he sees Jesus. He sees what Jesus has done on the cross, and he knows, God knows that your sins have been forgiven and paid for through Jesus' death, and that Jesus' righteousness has been transferred into your life. You now have the righteousness of Jesus Christ in your very spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. Church, that's wonderful, wonderful news. Praise the Lord. This is the first level of protection of the breastplate of righteousness. This is the first level of protection in there. So when you trust Jesus and surrender your life to him, you're not only made right with God, the Bible says you've also become a new creation. You're not the old fixed and bandages and licked together and stuck together and made right. You are brand new. Hallelujah. You may not feel brand new. You look in the mirror and you say, my goodness, where's the new hair at? I, w- I want new hair or whatever it may be in your life. I want a new body. I want new, I want better eyes. No, you are made new on the inside. Your spirit is made alive. It says this in 2 Corinthians. Um, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as a savior, he, that person is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual conditions, they've all passed away. 
Your old condition has been passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings new life. Your spirit is saved. Your spirit is saved. When you ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins and come to your life and you surrender your life to him, your spirit is saved. Now, let me tell you this. You then are only one-third saved. You're only one-third saved. Your body will never be saved. It's going to die because you're more than one. You're more than just spirit. You're spirit, soul, and body. That's who you are. And so your spirit is made brand new. I mean, it's alive. It, it can now function. It can now know God. It can know the God's will. And God has made it alive, and he's imparted his righteousness into our spirit. But your body, it's going to rot. It's going to die eventually. Maybe not in that order, but one of the ways, okay? Your body will never be saved. And not only that, your soul, your soul is not saved right away, but it is being transformed over a period of time. So you're only one-third saved, and God wants to deal with your soul today, and that's what the breastplate of righteousness also does for us. That's the second part of what it does. Your soul is not saved, but it's in the process of becoming saved. That's, why you can, that's the reason why Christians can be saved <clears throat> and still have bad personality. That's why Christians can be saved and have addictions. That's why Christians can be saved and have depression and have the things because their soul is not made perfect yet. But God, in his power and in his might and through the word and through truth, what we're going to find out, your soul is renewed. Your soul is renewed and it becomes like your spirit. It will never get to that point because we're still here on earth only when we get to heaven. But it is being renewed all the time. You can be saved and be an undercomer, not an overcomer where God wants you to be. Amen? Amen. How many of you guys know Christians like that? Or maybe even say, you know what? That's me you're talking about, Pastor Terry. Amen. Let's be real. Let's be honest. God wants us to be overcomers because the world needs to see a church full of overcomers, not people who are undercomers just like them. And when we live wrongfully, not righteously, we will reap the same things that they reap as well. Our spirits may be saved, but you know what? We're, we're going to suffer all the things that the world suffers. Amen. This is a law that God has placed, and God says, I want to change that. And the way to do that is through the changing of your soul, and it's called sanctification. Sanctification is this, becoming in practice what you already are in position. Isn't that good? Becoming, uh, becoming in practice what you already are in position. What are you in position? You are made righteous through Jesus Christ. You are right standing with God. You are saved. You are alive. You are a brand new creation. And now through sanctification, your soul is going to come and be more and more like that. That's God is working on it. God is changing that as long as you allow him, as long as you obey him. There's still some Christians who could sit right here and never do anything. And that's why the word of God says, those who make it to heaven, they're not going to receive a reward. And great is the loss of the reward. Church, there's rewards that God has for our lives, not just for being good, but rewards that those that trust him, those who put their faith in him, and those who do what he's called them to do. The rewards are awesome, but those who just get saved, there are some that are going to be saved that's just like they barely got in by the skin of their teeth. Amen? And that's after they brush their teeth. That's very thin skin, okay? All right, anyway. <laughs> Sanctification. Becoming in practice what you already are in position with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's awesome. I love that. God wants us to live in light of what we already are. He wants us to live that way. And many Christians are, have on their positional armor. In other words, they've been made right, but they're not putting on their practical armor. They're not putting on that breastplate of practicalness and having their lives changed. And that's where we want to be different. Amen? We're going to be different. We're going to trust the Lord. We're going to put on his full armor in our lives. Remember, we've been talking about spiritual warfare, God's victory, and God's provisions for your life, you only get that. They only operate in righteousness. Demons, our enemy, and their influence in our lives, they flow in wrongness. So when we operate in righteousness and we, we, we are made right with Jesus Christ, and then we're operating in that righteousness, and I'm going to tell you how. When we operate in that, we don't have the influence of the world. We don't have the influence of the spiritual darkness around us. We don't have the influence of demonic power in our lives. Hallelujah. So when we continue to operate in wrongness and sin, we invite demonic flow into our lives. And who wants demonic flow in their life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
And not only that, do you invite demonic flow in your life? You block the hand of God in your life, the blessings of God. I'm a Christian. I did this. That. That's, that's the reason why the gospel says once you give your life to Jesus Christ, everything is going to be great. That's why it's so wrong. There, there, there needs to be change. There needs to be transformation. And we put our faith in God and we, we take those steps one precept at a time, one precept at a time, everything that we learn. God's not going to expect you to be over here when you're just brand new saved. He knows where we're at and he leads us and he's patient and he allows us and he takes us to that place. And today he wants us to know that he wants you to operate in righteousness, his righteousness. And he's given you that power to do that so that you could be an overcomer. Amen. Unrighteousness gives Satan a legal right to mess with your life. That's because unrighteousness is Satan's nature. We invite him into our lives when we live a life that's contrary to truth. So when you're a Christian and you're not living the way God wants you to be, you're flowing over here with the devil and everybody else. And that's why, why is my life messed up when I gave it to Jesus Christ? I was promised everything would be great and hunky-dory. Your body does what your soul tells it. Remember, your spirit, you're made alive. Your soul, that's your mind, that's your thinking, that's your will, that's your emotions, that's your personality, that's who you are. Your mind, soul, and body. And your body does what your soul tells it. So in other words, when you die, your soul leaves, your body stops moving. It stops moving, it's dead. Because the soul has departed from it. But so we need to have our minds renewed. We need to have our soul renewed in the righteousness of God in it so that our soul can now speak to the body and the body will do the right things. Amen? So we need to have our, our soul renewed. The job of the spirit is to release righteous life into the soul. So you have inside of your soul, here's your body. Inside your body is your soul. Inside of your soul is your spirit. Your spirit's made alive through Jesus Christ. Righteousness has been put inside of you. God's righteousness. Now, the job of your spirit is to release that righteousness into the soul so that the soul is changed. Over time, it's changed. It's renewed. And so that we will start acting and behaving and flowing in God's righteousness and what God has for our lives. The soul is released life into the body. The body will begin to live righteously when the soul is listening to the spirit who's making it alive through the righteousness. Amen? Does that make sense? All right. When you have the breastplate of righteousness on, you have a delivery system that goes from the inside out, not from the outside in. See, religion does this. Religion does this. It wants to change your behaviors and your patterns by making you do things. And if you do things continuously, then you'll do it. And what it is, sin, the best thing that uh, um, religion can do is manage sin, but it cannot change and get rid of sin in your life. All it can do is manage sin. So when you're sitting there, like uh, if you're a murderer, Okay, and uh, what you do is murder. So you go and tell them murder is wrong. <laughs> so you're managing them. So you want to manage them so they will no longer murder. Amen. But you know, if it doesn't stop that person's uh, desires, it doesn't change that person's uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You're bent towards something. The way you behave, pre uh, pre yeah, predisposition. It, I've got it written down here. You think I might even read it? How's that? Uh, here we go. Religion tries to change you from the outside in. So in other words, what it says is this, and I'll get to it. Religion says this, come to church more often, doesn't it? Religion also says, give more, give more and you'll be more righteous and you'll be more like God and you'll have the less problems in your life. Serve more, do things more, do, 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 and worship. The only way you're really going to enjoy worship is jumping up and down and shouting, amen, and jump and running around the pews. Hey, I love running around a pew just like the next person. <laughs> But if we're doing it just to get closer to God and to be righteous, to change us, it will never work. What we're trying to do is religious activities to change us on the inside. And the Bible says the breastplate of righteousness comes from the spirit. And that righteousness comes out of the spirit into our soul, which changes the way we behave, the way we think, the way we act, the way we talk, the way we desires. And then that soul then changes the body and the body does the things that it should be doing. Amen. That's the whole point. So religion works on the outside in, and it never works. All it does is manage. But the Spirit of God works from the inside out. The pressure of God should be greater on the inside than the pressure of the world trying to come in. Amen? And that's what we want is the Spirit of God in our lives. Religion can only help manage sin, but it cannot stop it. it could tell, you could tell someone to stop, but doing something right, the right way to do it, but you haven't stopped the propensity. That's the word I was looking for. 
You haven't stopped the propensity or the desire within you to sin and to do those things. It doesn't stop it. Religion doesn't. But the Spirit of God and the breastplate of righteousness will change that. Can I give you that promise today? It will change that inside of your life today. If you want an authentic, lasting change, it must happen from the heart, from the breastplate, not from the hands. It has to happen in here. Amen? So how does this work? Let me read to you Ephesians 4.20. Uh, through 24 says this but that isn't what you learned about christ since you have heard about jesus and have learned the truth comes from him first first we have to learn that the truth where the truth comes from it originates from god since you've learned that throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life which is corrupt by lust and it's corrupted by deception instead let the spirit renew say renew renew your thoughts and your attitudes put on your new nature created to be like god truly righteous and holy hallelujah that's what god calls us to do so what you have to do first you have to start with the truth that's why the most foundational part of your armor is the belt of truth know what is true know what god says about the matter know what god thinks about the matter be in the word of god and the only way you're going to do that you're going to find that in the word of god be in that. Read it. The rest, it may go contrary to what even some churches are preaching. If the church is preaching contrary to the Bible, who should you listen to, church? The Bible. Amen. So if I'm, doing, if I'm preaching wrong, check it out and, and correct me. Amen? So and that's the loudest amen I got from you. Thank you. <laughs> so you need to start with the truth. What God says about the matter, your job is to go back to the, the truth and recite it again and again and again. Recite it again and again and again and again. Who are the best basketball players there are? The ones who shoot the hoops about, what, about 500 times? The ones that keep doing it again and again and again? Or the ones who think, oh, I got this. I know how it works now. That's how you do it. See, in order for it to get down inside of us, we have to recite it, we have to listen to it, we have to speak it, we have to pray it, we have to believe it, we have to claim it, we have to make it a part of ourselves, the Word of God. The Word of God is what changes, uh, which goes into our spirit, which releases the righteousness that goes into our soul, which changes our minds and changes who we are, everything about us. So we have to be in that Word all the time. We have to listen to the truth. We have to apply it. You could listen to preaching. Listening to preaching won't do it for you because you're going to forget everything I say. Some people, here's what's going to happen. They're going to listen to the word of God and it's going to hit them on the physical. It's going to hit them on the body. It's going to hit their ears. They're going to hear it and go, oh, okay. And by the time they walk out of this room, they're not going to remember anything that was said. They're not going to apply it. So it's not going to do them any good whatsoever. Whatsoever. It just hit their ear. That's why the Bible says we should be hearing with a, the hear, uh, our spiritual ears, not just with our physical ears. Amen? We need to be listening. And so some people, when they hear the truth or they read the truth or whatever, it just comes up and hits them on the f uh, flesh in their ear, and that's as far as it goes. That's kind of like the, the, the parable where the seed was thrown onto the hard soil and it was taken. The devil comes in and snatches it right away. You're not going to use that seed? I'm going to take it right away. That's what the devil does. He can't destroy the seed, but all he can do is steal it from you if you allow him. Or there are some people who allow the truth to come into their soul. They listen to it. They go, that's good. They might even open up the Bible and read it to make sure it's true and listen to the tape again. And, but then that's as far as they go. They just a little bit there. And what happens? You can't just leave it in your soul because your soul is corrupt. Isn't it? It's corrupt. Our thinking is wrong. Our acting is wrong. Our desires are wrong. We are to renew it by taking that word, taking the truth of what God says on any matter and applying it and pushing it down deeper and deeper and deeper into our spirit. Amen? And where our spirit is, there's the righteousness that God has planted in there. And as we put in, and we put in the pressure of the word of God and we just keep applying it, we keep reading it and we keep uh, uh, claiming it for ourselves and memorizing it and saying it out loud, praying it out loud, opening it and just saying it and... I'm telling you what, what that does, it just puts the pressure on the inside and allows the righteousness to come out into your soul. That's why the Bible says when we talk to our children, we should tell them about the Word of God, why they're in their beds, when they're waking, at all hours of the day, amen? You want that to be inside there so that when the Spirit is made alive, that righteousness can grab a hold of that truth and allow it to come up and affect our soul, our thinking, our wills, our emotions, amen? 
Hallelujah. So memorize it. Think about the Word of God. Meditate on it. Here's a great one. Sing it. Sing the Word of God. Just apply it and say, Lord, that is me. And when you sing that, say, Lord God, that, that promise that you have about me, that I am made right through what Jesus has done, thank you, God. Claim it. Claim it. Thank you, God, that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. This isn't just wishful thinking. This is grabbing hold of what God says on the matter and pushing it inside of us. See, the rest of the world just wants to put all this other stuff inside of us, or we allow it through various other means. But the only way to have it is when we have the more of God inside of us that pushes it out. Amen. And that's when we were changed. Hallelujah. So we've got to plant it deep, deep, deep. I love this. Who, who remembers Jacob? Jacob was a guy who wrestled with the angel all night long, all night long wrestled with this angel. Why? He says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Even after the angel struck him on the side of his hip and it's hurt, he still held on to him. He goes, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Church, that's what we should do with the word of God. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, God. I'm not going to let you go until that's a part of who I am. I'm not going to let this word go whatsoever. You've got to wrestle with it. You've got to make it a part of your life every day, every hour. Amen? Amen? So fill yourself with the word of God. Grab a hold of the truth. Then what you'll do is you'll renew your soul, and it'll tell your body, you're going to walk differently. You, Soul will tell your body, body, you listen to me because I'm in charge of you. You're going to walk differently. You're going to talk differently. You're going to think differently. You're going to uh, desire and act differently in every way. I'm your boss. I'm telling you what to do. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to wind up transformed. You're going to wind up transformed even before you know it. And the rest of the world's going to look at you and say, you're different. You say, I, I, I don't know why I'm different. I'll tell you why you're different. Because number one, the righteousness of God's inside your spirit, and you place the word of God inside of you, and that through your heart, because that breastplate of righteousness is there, and through your heart, the truth comes through, and you are made new. You're made brand new. Hallelujah. And your spirit and your mind is transformed. You don't think the way you used to. You don't think defeat. You don't think, ah, oh, woe is me. You think victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't think, ah, oh, uh, this is a part of my life and I'm just going to have to deal with it and that's just what I'm just, just going to have to learn to do. No, you say, you know what? No, I refuse that in the name of Jesus Christ because God has the promises for me and I'm claiming those things. That's what the devil wants me to think, but I'm claiming what God wants me to think. Amen? And we have to push it down again. Unless your spirit dictates truth to your soul and your soul dictates the truth to your body, all you can do is manage <clears throat> your unrighteousness. That's all you can do. You will not be transformed and that's what we want. We want to be transformed, and you can. Hallelujah. We can. You want the devil's unrighteousness out of your thoughts? Well, there's a, and with this, I'm closing. <clears throat> there's a scripture found in James 4, 7. In just a second. Oh, rat. Someone took my water. You thief. Oh, I gave it away. That's right. No, that's, hey, that's right. I'll, I'll be fine. I got a lot of saliva. <clears throat> okay, there we go. I'm ready. All right. <laughs> Actually, I don't. My mouth is very dry. Here we go. <laughs> Do you want the devil's unrighteousness thoughts out of you? Yeah. James 4 says this, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. A lot of people read that scripture. A lot of Christians read that scripture and just say, Ah, oh, all I got to do is say, Devil, get behind me. And he's not going to listen to a word you say. He's not. He's not, because number one, you don't, um, you've not, number one, submitted to what God has called you to do. Remember the first part of that verse? Submit to God, then resist the devil. Amen? Amen. Submit to God, and one of the ways to submit to God is by living a life of righteousness, by allowing the word to come in and make a difference in you, make a difference in your thinking, make a difference in your life. Allowing that. That's submitting to God. Say, God, this is what you want for my life. I claim it. I'm going to do it. And when I do that and I've submitted to you, the enemy's going to come with his attacks like he always does. That day of evil. It's probably this afternoon about 1230. It's going to be coming in your life. And what you're going to do is you're going to say, you know what? I've submitted to God. And I said, God, I want this in my life. I want your righteousness in my life. And I'm going to do that. And I place your word. I place your truth, what you say in the matter. And when the devil comes at me with a lie, because that's all he can come at you with, as a lie, and you say, in Jesus' name, I, I resist that. 
I renounce that. I send that back to hell from whence it came. That's a lie. That's not from the word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you, and I, you're not a part of my life. He has to flee. Amen? When we submit to God's ways, when we submit to the breastplate of righteousness and that belt of truth in our lives. Hallelujah. And with this, I do want to close. A lot of you guys don't know what you look like until you look into a mirror, right? Right? And maybe if you look on top of my head, you might be able to see a reflection. Last, last, I, I, it's truth. Last night, uh, um, I, I took a shower. My wife and I, we worked outside all day, and, and I took a long shower. And so what, I got out of it. I got dressed. And I thought, oh, I forgot something. I left it at the church. So I got in the, I don't know why I'm telling this story, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it. But I got in the truck, and as I got in the truck, I was on my way coming into town, and I just kept seeing this bright light. Just kept shining. It kept shining. And it, yeah, it was the light, the, the light reflecting off my shiny nose right into my eyes, you know. Now, now, let me look at the scripture and see where I was going with this. Oh, yes, I remember now. A lot of you don't know what you look like until you look in the mirror and say, oh, that's me? Wow. Oh, boy, have I got to do some work. <laughs> you look, that's the only way you know what you look like. How do you know? A lot of you guys think that you are beautiful saints. You're just the prettiest Christians out there. You know, you, you, I'm just, uh, you know what? Until you open up the word of God and it says, this is how our life should be. And all of a sudden you look at your life, you're going, wow, I don't look anything like that. The Bible just says, you is ugly. <laughs> That's what that Bible just did. You is ugly. And you're ugly in here. I want to change that. If you allow my word, you continue to look in my word, if you continue to look in the mirror and apply it to your life, apply it to your thinking, apply it to your talking, apply it to your singing, apply it to the things that you do, apply it to every part of your life. When you take the truth and apply it, it's going to change the way you look, and then you're going to be beautiful. You're going to look in the word of God and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. You're not going to be sitting there thinking, oh, look how great I am. You're not going to be doing that, but you're going to find out that less and less of the world has a hold of them the way you think, and the way you act, and the way you talk. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen? And all the time. Hallelujah. So look at your heart. Things you think. The things that you want. The things that you do. Does, it re does your life reflect the truth of the, or does it reflect the world? Let's be honest. Only you can do that. In God and the Holy Spirit. So you accept the truth, believe it is God's standard, and you drive it home. And you drive it in and you drive it in. And the fastest way to get over addictions is not to say, I'm not going to do that anymore. Because that's not going to change. You've said that before, but you don't have the power to do that. And it's not going to listen to you. And you're still going to have those addictions in your life. You can't, in your own strength, say, I'm not going to do this anymore. It doesn't work. And it never will. You want to be set free from the addictions in your life, whatever it may be, what you need. You need the truth. You need that truth pushed down into your spirit which God has made alive through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And when you push that truth in, the righteousness comes out and your life has changed. Drive it in, drive it in, drive it in, drive it in. And then God's going to open up a release valve and righteousness is going to flow. I want to close with this scripture. Um, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. How do you do that? You put on the breastplate of righteousness. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of the world. How do we conform to the patterns of the world? By listening to the world all the time. Repeating the world all the time. What we need to do is just the opposite. It says, do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for your life. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for your righteousness that's in our lives. We don't deserve that. You know, I did a funeral uh, Friday night, and one of the things that I read and then I repeated, and I thought it was so good, and that is this. Uh, every person, no one goes to hell except for those who absolutely deserve it. And there's no mistake. The people who go to hell are the ones who absolutely deserve it. 
And the people who go to heaven are the ones who absolutely do not deserve it. We don't deserve your kindness. We don't deserve heaven. We don't deserve your righteousness. Lord God, that's what you want to give us. Thank you. Lord, I thank you for every believer in here today. You have the righteousness. You have seeds of righteousness inside of you. God wants that righteousness to flow out of your spirit and into your soul. And you do that through truth. Uh, put down into your spirit again and again and again. Uh, putting the truth of the word of God. Putting the promises. Rememorizing the scriptures. Singing those scriptures again and again and again. And then that righteousness will flow out of your spirit into your soul and renew your mind and renew who you are in Jesus' name. While we're still praying, I, I, I want to do two things real quick. Is there someone here today who says, I'm not a Christian and I want to give my life to Jesus? You can receive him today. You don't have to go through a class. <laughs> God is waiting. And if you're here and you don't believe, God brought you here to hear this message so that you would be saved. Is that you? Please raise your hand because I want to pray for you and you will receive Jesus and you'll have that righteousness inside of you. Is there anyone here today? I just want to make sure. Hallelujah. All right. And the church, the, the second part is for us. Have we been living the way God's called us to live? And there again, it's not about doing other than to put the word of God inside of us. Have you have allowed the world to put more of its ideas and thoughts and beliefs into your life have you neglected putting the word of god in your life other than sunday morning because it takes more than one day and like i said you could leave this place and totally forget what all was said have you neglected that but you realize you know what i'm going to give my life to jesus and i i, I want to have a change in my life. I want this righteousness to flow through my spirit and flow through my soul and into my f flesh today. I want that change in my life. I want a renewed mind. And so I commit myself to have that. I commit myself, submit myself to the will of God so that I can resist the devil in the times of evil and he must flee. If that is you, now's the time to really do some business with that. Let's pray. Hallelujah. You pray. Ask the Lord for that change. This is your chance to respond to what God is speaking to you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask that, uh, you to stand. Go ahead and stand. And let's just place our hands on our heart and pray with me. Father, forgive me for my sins. Those things that separate me from you. Forgive me for living like the world. For longing for the things of the world. And allowing the world to influence my life. Forgive me for neglecting your word, your words of life. Lord, I come to you right now, and I humbly ask for forgiveness. In Jesus' name, and Holy Spirit, I give you freedom to speak into my life the truths of God. In Jesus' mighty name, I want to be changed for the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name, I surrender. I surrender. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. Those who prayed that prayer, Lord God, you know. And Lord God, we're coming after you. And Lord, we're going to put on, always wearing the belt of truth, but Lord, today, some of us have put on not only the our stationary uh, 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 breastplate of righteousness, Lord God, our positional breastplate of righteousness. But Lord, today we are putting on the practical breastplate of righteousness. 
that our lives may be different and changed through your word. Amen. If you have made a commitment to Jesus Christ after listening to this message, or if you have any questions concerning our ministry here at Faith Outreach Center, we would like to hear from you. Please contact us through our website at www.faithoutreach.cc or you can call us at 574-223-7631. We would be happy to assist you in any way we can. On behalf of Faith Outreach Center, this is Roger Vogel saying, God bless.